Hello viewers, how are you? My name is Niaj Arifin. I'm a CCNN CCNP. Today we are going to solve a big lab. As you can see that this is a Cisco three-layer hierarchical models, good for a big enterprise network. Also, we can call it partial mesh topology design for this network. And the three-layer hierarchical models means, you know, this is not a collapse core model. So the collapse core model is when your access switch is directly connected to your core switch. You do not have any middle layer, like a distribution layer or you do not have this three layer, you have two layers. That is called a collapse curl. But we are doing the three layer hierarchical models where you have your access layer connected to your distribution layer and then your distribution layer is connected to your core layer. And then we have four AS devices here. We are going to configure active active failover. And for that we need four switches. And if you see, we have four switches here as well. We are not going to configure anything in that four switches. We are going to leave as it is in the whole topology. Then if you notice, we have two ISP router here that is connected to two different ISP. One is through Verizon. It could be Grameen phone if you're living in Bangladesh. I live in US, so I put Verizon there. This is a carrier. And this is ISP2 that is representing the bridge or the VMnet zero. If you see here, that is the management cloud, which is the actual name, which is the network interface card in my host PC that is representing again ISP2 isp2 here if you see the network block 192.168.10.0 this is the private network for any lan then here we have a branch office this branch office is connecting to one of our isp router which is router 2 and then we are going to configure side to side vpn here we are going to configure ipsec ik version 2 here maybe you already got it that represents two different location if you are living again in bangladesh that could be dhaka and that could be in a different location chittagong kulna whatever it is the location does not have any significance the goal here is to configure ipsec ik version 2 and if you notice there is a network admin here who is going to connect remotely to our internal network and he will have access to ASDM which we are going to implement later on then he will have access to the IC server here and then he will use the PRTG monitoring system to monitor the entire network and then definitely will have a telnet and SSH session to many of these devices so the ISP1 connection which is representing the Verizon network in this topology is nothing but a Cisco router if you see here this is a Cisco router and I have just changed the icon I put a cloud PNG images there. We are going to configure a loopback a zero interface and we are going to give some IPs like 100.1. Again, this IP address is representing the ISP connection one here. There is no point of using two bridge network. That is why we are using a router in a state to represent a different ISP. And we'll make sure that every devices in this topology have the connectivity to that loopback interface 100.80.100.1 again this is a slash 24 mask if you notice in this corner i have leveled some subnets that we have used here we have used the flsm fixed length subnet mask we have used a slash 29 where we have eight hosts six of them are usable and it has 32 blocks in this video we are not going to talk about how we have to calculate the subnet i'm just going to give an overview what type of subnet i have used here this is slash 30 which is 255.255.255.252 we have four hosts two of them are usable and then 64 blocks for slash 29 again that is flsm fixed length subnet mask eight hosts six usable 32 blocks and that is a class post slash 24 we have total 256 hosts 254 of them usable and entirely that is one block and these are the access layer switches where our endpoint devices are going to connect you can think about floor one has switch one floor two has x switch two floor three has x switch three and floor four has the four in production network you might see 3850 poe power ethernet series or for access layer switches in general you might see 3850 3960 4800 2900 series if you do google or youtube research you will have an idea for access layer for distribution layer for core layer switches what type of switches are used there again for the distribution and core layer in both layers you might see a very common cisco 6500 series the asf 5520 which i have used in my lab and this is cisco asr 1001 x router that is called the h router because if you notice in my lab this is my internal network this is the isp and it is sitting in the middle that's why it called the h router however i'm going to show you what type of nodes and images i have used in this lab so again for the isp1 this is a cisco c7200 series router you can see here 
for the ISP this is a VIOS router for the switch this is a layer 2 switch here the SA is SA915 and then also this is a layer 2 switch all the core layer distribution and access layer they have the same switch I have changed the icons only they are literally the same images okay we have five VLANs in this topology VLAN 10 represents IT 20 represents HR, 30 represents accounting and 40 represents sales. Also the 50 represents the servers. We are going to configure the HSRP routing protocol here for the enter VLAN and load balancing. So our layer 2 connectivity will be up to the distribution layer. From the uplinks of the distribution layer, there will be layer 3 connectivity. We have layer 2, layer 3 ether channel here. For the DHCP server, we are going to use a server 2016. I've seen in a lot of videos, people use switches and routers for DHCP server. However, in production network, they do not use any switch or router for DHCP. They rather keep the routers and switches for routing and switching. They are dedicated for the network connectivity. In production network, you need lots of IPs for guests, users, clients. You cannot put your production gears like routers and switches to do the network job and at the same time act like a DHCP server to lease IPs to more and more hosts. So the DHCP server is going to connect with one of your distribution layer switches to initially lease IPs to the clients. And then if you see we have an IAC here we are going to configure as the radio server to give the network access only to the authenticated devices and user. Come on you do not want random people come to your company gain access to your network and then literally access to your internal resources. So we will rather make sure that only authenticated users and devices are permitted through the IAC server. Now we are going to take a sneak peek about what technologies we are going to implement in this topology. This is just an overview. Definitely basic configuration, IP assignment with Cisco 3 layer hierarchical model for enterprise network. We have already discussed that. Then as you have seen, we have a lot of ether channels, both layer 2 and layer 3. Then STP is spanning tree and then load balancing through STP. Track IP and track IP load balancing for layer 3. We are going to implement the track IP here because we do not have anything to monitor these interfaces, these ether channels and all the other interfaces. We can also do load balancing through the track IP. We'll discuss about that when we implement that. Then access port and trunk port which is here. These are our access ports. These are all trunk ports. Then VTV server and client as we have said if this is the DHCP server we are going to configure the distribution as the VDB server and the access layer switches as the VDB client. Then we'll configure NAT, PAT, access list, access group, object group, which we have to implement in our ASA devices to translate this network to the outer world. And then we are going to configure the ASA high availability, active, active. Then we are going to learn IPsec, IK version 2, most probably SSL VPN and Cisco AnyConnect. And then we'll implement the ASDM. We are going to learn about the Cisco IC 2.2.0470 as the radius server. Definitely the Telnet and SSH. We have management interfaces as well, if you have noticed the management interface. 30 and 40 network and then network monitoring with PRTG software to monitor all this networking gears and then we are going to learn about how to capture the packets in production network so in even G and GNS3 if you right click in any links it will let you capture the packet however in production network things are not that easy you literally have to capture the packets and then you have to export them into another PC and then you have to analyze them through Wireshark we are also going to learn about the passive interface and OSPF authentication. The passive interface is just to block unnecessary networks into the OSPF routing table. We will talk about that when we are going to configure the OSPF. We are also going to do the EBGP, Interior Border Gateway Protocol. If you see here, S100 and S200. These two remote routers is going to have connection through the EBGP. And then we are going to solve this topology via steps. As of now, I have like 20, 21 steps to follow to solve this lab. I would definitely request you to be patient and see all the steps, how I do it. Because if you miss any of these steps, the lab might not get solved. As we have a lot of technologies to implement here, 
This is again not a beginner's level. You can say this is an advanced CCNA or CCNP. As you have seen, there are a lot of technologies to implement in this topology. Yes, this is true that it will require a lengthier period of time to solve this lab. But I would suggest you to invest your attention and patience to this lab and do solve with me. Trust me, the outcome will be better. You will learn a lot of things. We will learn together. Okay, with that being said, let's do it together. I will see you in my first step.